Now, the one thing that makes it a little bit tricky in a market like that is you have to think about the sunk capital investment cost. Right. But if if we can sort of normalize that out, and that's the biggest like yeah, yeah, unknown yeah. factor in the whole but I'll equation. Go marginal variable right, cost. Right. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. but if you just look at marginal yeah. variable cost, that is your energy consumption. hundred right. percent. So right. if you guys like love the trees and think we're gonna all die from carbon emissions, you should ride a bike. If you're not riding a bike, you should have like a used Toyota Yaris from ten <laughs> years ago. You shouldn't be buying a Tesla. High level, because yeah. the Tesla has a much higher variable marginal cost than your 10 year old Toyota Yaris. Mm -hmm. So like the cheapest thing you can do will have the lowest uh, carbon footprint. If I can grow a tomato in my house using rainwater capture and transport it like 40 feet to eat it, lowest carbon impact than I can get relative to going to HEB and getting one that was grown mm -hmm. in Florida versus getting one that was grown in Guatemala right. and shipped up in the wintertime, right? So it, it's it's all about like cost is a direct reflection of energy consumption. So I think I know where you're going next. Yeah. So take me to the next step, what I think is maybe proof of work, but go on. Yeah. So so that that's that's kind of the first realization is that if if we're thinking about competitive goods in society, um the price you pay is ultimately the energetic representation in aggregate that went into that good. And this even includes um, uh, like the intellectual input as well. Mm -hmm. Now, wh what I said there is in equilibrium on competitive right. goods. But if I'm in equilibrium on competitive goods, like this table, for example, this is a relatively competitive good. So there's some you know, design quality, there's some like marketing, but it's a relatively small uh, price differential mm -hmm. that you're going to achieve um, using marketing or design, right? So, like, what it you don't really get the design within reach catalog? Those things are expensive. This well, is a nice well, table. well, but 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 here's <laughs> the thing. Let's let's look. So, there's there's two parts of it, right? There's the there's the the immediately traceable enough, yeah. energy consumption, which is okay. I I had to plant the seeds. I had to water the trees. I had to grow the trees. I had to harvest the trees. I had to transport the trees. I had to mill the trees. I had to like get a carpenter to turn it into a table. There's some dude in the middle here who's like the marketing and design guy, yeah. right? He still draws a salary, right? And the majority of his salary, he goes and he spends consuming energetic goods. So if he is a competitive player in the economy, he isn't making much above what like somebody else yeah, could make. And he's also then consuming the energy indirectly through the things that he consumes. Right. So even his sort of intellectual salary, which is, uh, you know, IP and intelligence and whatever that is, that's still also technically a competitive good. And if he's consuming what he makes, his his mind share is represented in energy just the same as the milling and the transporting yeah. of the wood. So I distracted you. Let's all right, right. So what's the next step? How do we get to <clears throat> the proof of work and quasi system? So then... so when when we talked about the sort of second class of yeah. stables, um, the, one of the big issues is the oracleization problem. Yeah. And so the realization here is that miners can act as oracles. Yeah. Um, because if I look at a proof of work system, the uh, the the majority of the cost uh, is associated with the electricity to power the ASICs or GPUs. Right. Um, the actual capital cost is very low relative to the to the energy cost. Right. Over so, a long period of time, amortized, and yeah, yeah sure, you got big yeah. fixed uh, fixed inputs, uh, capital costs up front. But hey, you go over a long enough time and you amortize it, and especially if you have a more decentralized. Um, mining market, I hear you, right? So over the long term, the primary mining cost is uh, at a variable marginal basis is energy inputs is what you're right. saying. Right, yeah. I mean, if, if you look at mining operations, um, when it like nets out um, maybe three to 4% of their cost is associated with capital and operations mm -hmm. and the other 95, 6% right over lifetime, yeah. is just straight electricity purchases. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so <clears throat> they they have this like reference to energy, essentially, which is a like, what is a hash? They they are a producer of a hash and their primary cost of producing that hash is electricity. Mm -hmm. Right. So they can act as an oracle because if if they produce a hash and they can sell that hash at market above their costs, they'll keep producing. If they can, can't can sell that hash above cost, 
at some point they're going to stop producing. Right. Right. Um, and so they can literally become an oracle of how expensive it is to produce a hash, which then can become an oracle for what the real value of the electricity is that goes into producing that hash. Right. And the cool part is because a proof of work system is using that for security, you're not creating like these weak, brittle oracleization things that are dependent on a, a one sort of market with a potentially illiquid book. The 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 se entirety security of the proof of work chain is also the oracle. Right. Right. Which is like a beautiful solution to how do you get an oracle without introducing centralization? You use the exact same mechanism for consensus so that you don't introduce any new points of trust uh, or dependencies. Yeah, it's it's really el an elegant idea, right? Which is that, oh, the dollar isn't super like stable in a robust way over long term. What might be a better measure of that in most people's lives that are applicable to their purchasing power over a period of time yet are still relatively stable in a short term basis for commerce? Energy is a great choice for that. Oh, how do we get energy represented or the price or value of energy represented on chain Oh, well, if it's a chain, proof of work actually provides that Oracle mechanism. It can be represented there in a totally decentralized, incentivized way, which is like that. It's, it's a really, really attractive and elegant way to come up with an idea for a decentralized, robustly stable coin uh, from there. 